The topics one is the importance and the issues of collaboration during R&D period for infectious disease control in Africa. I would like every member of the panel to turn their videos on so that we may see you. This discussion will be chaired by Dr. Haruo Watanabe, the supervisor for SUTREPS and uh, IC Rep NTD. Thank you very much. We would like to begin a panel discussion on topics one and allow me to introduce the members. The first group, we have uh, uh, Dr. Koichi Suzuki from Taikyo and the Just Fund Senior Director, K Dr. Kei Katsuno, who, who spoke already. The second group is Dr. Yasuhiko Suzuki from Hokkaido, and the third is uh, Dr. Ayato Takada from Hokkaido and uh, uh, from Denka Vaccine Development Group leader, uh, Dr. Daisuke Kato. And the fourth group is uh, from Nakasaki, uh, Dr. Yasuda, Dr. Jiro Yasuda, and from Canon Systems Molecular. The development that we have by uh, Dr. Yasuyoshi. I would like to invite uh, the first group, Dr. Suzuki from Tokyo and uh, uh, Dr. Katsuno from Jihit are the two first pair. Uh, thank you very much. We focused on Bruni Ulcer, which is one of the NTDs, and uh, funded by AMS NTD. We are in the development of all-in-one diagnostic kit, and we are in the final year, uh, fourth year. And since last year, uh, sorry, uh, we are in the fourth year, the final year for the integrated research, and the, in, we have begun the development of all-in-one diagnostic kit starting this year. Brewery also may not be known to many. I would like to uh, say something like 2,000 uh, incident cases are being reported to WHO each year. This is a highly neglected uh, tropical disease, and you can see that most of the patients are concentrated in West uh, Africa, and we are working with uh, the Ivory Coast. Very also is uh, caused by Mycobacterium ulcerans, which is one of the video, uh, and that leads to widespread ulcer upon infection. Why mycolactone, which is a macrolide toxin, causes ulcers? I have not been known, but very uh, recently. Based on our genome-wide screening, we have identified one gene which probably is related to mycolactone, which induces uh, apoptosis. This pathogen exists in the environment water sources, so uh, many of the affected people are children who tend to play uh, in uh, the water areas and there's no way of uh, diagnosis which means that the delay that the diagnosis could lead to a very debilitating uh, situation and this could lead to uh, stigma and could affect uh, their psyche so what we need to do is it has some issues that we have to overcome. Many of the patients uh, uh, occur in remote areas with uh, poor access to health care. There are no way now of uh, treating, and uh, the awareness of Burry uh, ulcer is very low. Even when we were able to diagnose uh, ulcer, uh, locally, uh, wound management is not uh, done appropriately. The AMED project that we 
are in through the eSkin Health app that you can use. Initially, it was through a smartphone. Now, people are using tablets. The information of a patient ulcer can be recorded and be sent via internet for best consultation and examination by doctors who are in larger cities. We have a, a simultaneous translation function, so um, doctors in Japan that may be able to provide consultation too. And as for wound management method, we have a short uh, French language videos, several of them, which are already downloaded in the tablets that use and so during surveillance we are able to uh, do patient education at the same time by showing those uh, videos and this is uh, uh, being planned another major issue has to do with the uh, lack of a rapid uh, diagnostic tool we are using a LAMP system, which is a DNA amplification system, and a very simple uh, DNA chromatography, which can detect the amplified DNA uh, used in combination. Now, LAMP requires amplification, amplified uh, DNA, and even when the even it, the, when this is uh, the simplest forms, we do have to use uh, some equipment, but by using DNA chromatography, we are able to, to the sensitivity of uh, PCR, uh, detect DNA. It's the same thing for PCR, but it's quite important here, and we can do DNA chromatography, we are able to actually um, fix uh, the uh, samples in these uh, small pigments. And uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, the doctors who are, have developed this personally to how to do this. And all of the um, important variations can be fixed in the kit as a de dried reagent and we are now in the process of uh, developing this for the the simplest application of this approach what we are doing now is a, in a com fully completely sealed device uh, we have already uh, demonstrated that dna application and detection is possible sensitivity is where there are four bacilli per sample we can detect long-term storage conditions and we also need to uh, ramp up heat to about 60 degrees we are thinking now about improving simplified heating system and then in the kit you do need to operate a small tab and we are now in uh, the process of trying to make this even more simple uh, in now currently this is uh, a dna extracted from uh, the bacterium and we are using strains uh, cultured from them in our labs but we need to actually uh, test using uh, true samples from local patients uh, we will not be able to access them waiting so we are going out actively as collecting biological samples now when the kit is completed at the bottom this is what we want to eventually see we may not be able to have uh, uh, realized something that as simple as this but uh, when we can develop this further we it may be able to do even better this you don't need to well, in the end the, the perfect situation we won't need uh, any freezers uh, it can be stored at the uh, room uh, temperature in order to avoid cross contamination which is a big problem for every type of testing like this we will be able to con have uh, uh, the results taken within an hour what's wonderful is we can detect the multiple DNAs at the same time, so not just very ulcer, but other necessary pathogens that require diagnosis and may be detected all at the same time eventually uh, using this. Last year, WT, 
WHO has come up with a roadmap for NTD. Under their description of uh, Aburi, it says that in addition to building capacity of local health workers, development of rapid uh, uh, test kit as well as comprehensive surveillance system identified as gaps. And we are uh, we're relieved that uh, we were not outside of what was really needed and uh, accessed by WHO. Uh, that's the end of my point. Any comments from G. Hit representative? Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Suzuki has given a detailed uh, discussion. So from G. Hit, I would like to limit my comments to a few points. First of all, I am really thankful. We are very thankful that we can work together with Dr. Suzuki on an important project like this. There are two points that I have to think about. Number one, we need continued uh, discussion and uh, uh, building a partnership important. This uh, project by Dr. Suzuki has been funded by uh, JHIT, but even before that decision was made, we have been in discussion with not just Dr. Suzuki and his group, but the local partners, uh, which led to the realization of the funding. And as the project continued, uh, discussions have been continued on a number of uh, areas and places so that we can make sure that this project can go on stably and steadily. And that requires continued discussion with Dr. Suzuki and uh, the partnership. And that, I believe, we believe as GHIT to be important. Not just this project, uh, for other potential projects, we may be able to consult with uh, Dr. Uh, Suzuki. We do not do DNA testing ourselves. So from point of view of practi practicality as well as feasibility, we may go to Dr. Suzuki for his thoughts. It's quite important from a GHIT perspective to be able to make sure that networks are being uh, uh, made. The second point, and this has been mentioned by JICA's uh, Mr. Takizawa, uh, GHIT wants to co-fund, uh, work together, not just ourselves, but together with other groups, uh, take uh, Dr. Suzuki's project. We can identify where we can help most and where AIMIT can help most. And if we can do that, it would be best. So individual possibilities of working together should be pursued. And when projects are up and running, we can think about even more comprehensive possibility of working together with other partners. I would like to say to Dr. Suzuki uh, to assist us further. I would like to have all of the presentations take place first and uh, uh, wait for discussion at the end. So may I invite from Hokkaido University, uh, Professor Yasuhiko Suzuki. So let me begin. Thank you. So at Satret and TDS, I'm a team leader for both areas. So I'd like to explain this in detail. And satraps, in terms of uh, tuberculosis and NTTS, a Hansen disease, and also human uh, African trypanosomiasis HAT. So satraps, uh, in terms of what we have conducted in tuberculosis, below 100 yen, you'll be able to conduct diagnosis tests uh, in terms of gene uh, therapy, gene diagnosis. And unlike uh, Dr. Koichi Suzuki, it's quite pr primitive. But LED uh, with the lighting, it's uh, eradicate, irradiated. And this, if it's positive, it would glow. If it's negative, it will not glow. So this is about 3,000 yen in yen terms. So this one uh, specimen or diagnosis is 100 yen below. In Zambia, at the health ministry, at a university medical faculty, there is a tuberculosis safe environment. A facility has been introduced. This is containerized biosafety laboratory. So this is the outside, and inside is as such. And this uh, is a researcher from Japan, and this is a local researchers working together for uh, conducting uh, survey tuberculosis. And also HAT, we also have a rapid diagnostic system. So they have worked hard in the local field so that they will be able to dry this diagnostic kit. And utilizing that field, research has been conducted. 
And at that time, the counterparty is Zambia University and University Teaching Hospital Ministry of Health in Zambia. Furthermore, NTDS project, well, each of the handmade dry lamp was utilizing inkjet printer. And utilizing inkjet printer, it's very easy and rapid and massively produce this uh, sample kit or diagnostic kit. And by doing so in Zambia, the field research had been conducted, and one of them is in terms of the bush in the, the west and south. Many, of course, uh, 379 specimens and 441 of uh, each area. Conducting these two area samples, as you can see, about one or in 100 people, there is a leprosy uh, Hansen disease. And in Zambia government, the, uh, it's an official, it's 50 times or 100 times of the official announcement made by the government. So the Ministry of Health, we communicated this uh, actual fact, and there was a survey that was necessary uh, throughout the nation, and they have become aware of that. And uh, this is the, in terms of uh, trade panel Somania HAT. This is a nationwide surveillance that has been conducted. And by doing so, the nationwide risk map or hazard map has been created, especially in the box here, as you can see, Wapla uh, region, very high uh, uh, HAT. AT has been evident. And also, this uh, diagnostic kit in Zambia and Ministry of Health and University, in University Medical Facility, they have utilized this kit and to conduct early di uh, diagnostic, and many lives were being saved. So, by doing so, we have many uh, institutions that would like to join on this effort. Uh, Na National Health Institute, an NGO, Zambia, uh, tuberculosis and Raposi Trust, uh, also members of the alignment. So it's a widening of the scope of the uh, alignment. So this is 2015 to 2019. And what has been nurtured the experiences here in Satoreps, uh, this is the uh, other project. This is a bovis tuberculosis uh, in terms of the human and animal zoonotics and uh, the project to control the situation. This uh, experience was very useful. And this project, as a sub-project leader, I was uh, participating, uh, I was invited. And in actuality, the bovis, well, in terms of zoonotics result, it's uh, based on a bovis tuberculosis. And based on that, easy, of course, the diagnostic method has to be established. And here, as you can see, these are the achievement through the effort in terms of what could be done. Well, the achievement is already what I have alluded to already, but how, what action needs to be taken? As Dr. Watanabe mentioned at the keynote, in five years, the project, uh, this timeline is very difficult to manage. So in five years, there are some deliverables. And now is the time to implement in the society and community, and it stops. So reprocy, uh, it's a nationwide surveillance. We have, uh, there's a necessity to conduct them. And the Ministry of Health have agreed upon that. But at that time, it has halted and frozen. And that's all for myself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Takara from Hokkaido, please. I would like to share my slide then. Uh, it's not, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. We can. Thank you very much. Uh, our satraps, we are working together with uh, Adenka, and this was, of, of course, uh, working with uh, Adenka, and uh, this has already been mentioned. Uh, our satraps works with Zambia. 
we have Zambia and the Democratic Republic of uh, Congo. Uh, we started with the Zambia only, but uh, we are now working together with the DRC. This is about establishing diagnostic method and epidemiological uh, study, uh, and also uh, developed by human resources uh, for Ebola. This is about Ebola virus uh, rapid diagnostics too. And this uh, be, e, e, belongs to the dif uh, uh, different uh, families, and uh, by infecting, this would lead to in humans and in animals um, severe hemorrhagic uh, diseases. When you think about uh, a diagnosis of uh, Ebola, uh, this is listing all of the possible diagnoses of uh, viral diseases. You have uh, you can look at clinical features, isolate virus, as well as uh, DNA, RNA detection, etc. But uh, if you think about uh, uh, the location where you see e Ebola, it's very e remote, especially uh, in the first cases, and that uh, the initial clinical symptoms are no different from uh, uh, common cold. And uh, because these are remote areas, you don't have public health or transportation access is poor. You really don't know where you have to anticipate first patient. And so the, the most important thing to do is to isolate them and to start treating through early diagnosis. That's the best way. But to do that, we have to uh, have a rapid, uh, stable, simple antigen detection system. And that's what we decided to do. So we focused on uh, antigen detection. Uh, in the initial such trips, together with our partners in Zambia, uh, we have come up with uh, different monoclonal antibodies which have reactivities. We didn't know if uh, this is uh, uh, possible, but we were being prepared by uh, putting to creating monoclonal antibodies. As we were doing that, as you know, a major outbreak took place. This is when we began our collaborative research with Denka, uh, immunochromatography kit by Denka, and uh, below shows uh, schematically what we're doing. Uh, it's not this big. The top above is the kit. So you ha you drop a, a droplet of blood to the, the right, and uh, uh, this will be uh, deployed, and you have the results. This was a prototype. We went to the United States, and at the uh, uh, facilities, we tried to see um, using the infected uh, monkey model where the actual uh, pathogen can be detected and we were able to confirm. We asked uh, Denka to put together these uh, ma user ma manual in English and Japanese. Of course, in uh, Congo, we need uh, French. And we had the kit. So we went to DRC, uh, where we tend to see Ebola and for quite often. I went there for the first time in 2015 in Nerve. is in charge of that. This is a research and testing facility which is uh, under the federal government. We went to uh, this organization with the kit and they had a stored Ebola uh, sample and we have tested that. We were able to see the lines appear it, when uh, this and this could be done within 10 to 20 minutes and you can store this at room temperature for a year No electricity is needed. This can be used in remote areas We were able to actually demonstrate by showing the kit there then and they have decided to adopt this adopt meaning um, WHO has uh, a PCR kit that re is required for differential diagnosis but the for or good storage for a pre-screening, uh, they decided to introduce this. We asked the Denka, and every time an outbreak occurs through JICA, uh, we shared, so uh, sent uh, the kids uh, to DRC. And we have uh, clinical data obtained at, their, at the time. And as was mentioned by Dr. Watanabe, we now have had this uh, approved by PMZA Japan. And this is uh, how uh, the kit is being used as uh, the Ebola outbreak is occurring in this manner locally. From here onwards, 
I would like to ask a Kato san from Denka to discuss. Thank you. I am Kato with Denka. I have the pleasure of reporting. I would like to talk about some of the outcomes to our partnership and some of the issues we experience, uh, the difficulties uh, uh, we experience in the partnership. This is uh, the actual clinical data. Uh, a total of 928 suspected cases of Ebola infection. Um, we have been able to collect the samples and the gene expert. And you can see that sensitivity 85%, specificity 99% has been shown. So we were able to show concurrence with the approved method by WHO. And this is comparing with other kits already approved by WHO. The, the yellow at the top is uh, our performance as a quick navi compared to that. The second line, the third line, both of which have been uh, approved by WHO for Ebola. Uh, we, you can see that uh, the outcome has been comparable to both of them. I would like to also talk about the uh, uh, other uh, also, filovirus, but that have not been approved yet. This is for Ma Marburg virus. Uh, this is a list of antibodies provided by uh, the Hokkaido University lab. And using that, we have uh, come up with a prototype. We have four prototypes already created. The recombinant virus with three recombinants uh, have been tested for reactivity, and we have been able to show that. Also, philo virus. Uh, we are trying to see if there is cross reactivity to e with the Ebola too. Uh, we have six types of virus, including Zaire and Sudan. We have been able to test that, confirm that there's no uh, cross reactivity. So we're using that, we are now in the process of developing this kit specifically for Marburg uh, virus. And this has already been uh, tested in the United States. To the left is this Marburg virus, to the right is uh, Ebola virus. You see reactivity for Marburg, but no reactivity to Ebola. And uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, fighting uh, this uh, product for approval. This is looking at some of the difficulties and challenges we face as we participate in, in the project. Difficulty, evaluation with clinical specimen in the case of rapid diagnostic kit is essential, especially when the disease is, is not uh, endemic to Japan. It was very difficult to collect samples. Uh, Ebola requires special handling. So the difficulty in case of Ebola, for example, is that we could not use uh, cultured uh, samples. A challenge, WHO and other international organizations, when they procure products after approval, has to uh, go through the approval process. That is, uh, of course, a prerequisite. By obtaining EUL or emergency use listing, uh, the new systems can be provided to various fields. At the time when we started up our Ebola project, this EUL was not uh, fully established. But uh, due to COVID-19, uh, the COVID-19 process uh, seems to be up and running better. Uh, because of lack of resource, uh, uh, the, uh, the Ebola si site has been uh, discontinued, unfortunately. I have visited two issues, uh, sales in uh, African countries. In case of Denka, we have no track record of uh, marketing in endemic uh, countries of Africa, and it is very difficult for us to be alone in bringing our product products to new markets. And also, we have to make sure that pricing has to be low enough, and that is another difficulty. And we also need to consider distribution costs. We have to ship products from Japan, to be very, very honest, you know, low ROI products that may or may not find market uh, makes it difficult for a commercial company like ourselves to make decision. The second is we are now in the process of obtaining EUL approval. As we think about marketing, 
not every country and market that we consider as destinations are, uh, are stable politically. Uh, very difficult. So, so we have to think about how we can best deliver our products uh, in a best manner without the uh, fail. And that, uh, I, w I have to say, will continue to be an issue when we want to sell. Uh, it seems that we're frozen. Uh, sorry, yes. Now, WHO's uh, EUL focuses on SARS-CoV-2 and uh, uh, Zika. Zika sorry. And uh, they are giving priority to SARS-CoV-2. So we also have uh, kids for SARS-CoV-2. So what we are thinking of doing is to familiarize ourselves with the EUL uh, process through our SARS-CoV-2 uh, and then move on to Ebola and others. So from Nagasaki University, uh, Professor Yasuda, please. Yes, can you hear me? This is Yasuda speaking from Nagasaki University. In our group, in 2016, as we are involved in SAPREP project, and in Gabon a region in Central Africa, we had been working in the research of the virus uh, infection and some of the methodology that could be established uh, for the laboratory surveillance. And this year, it's an extension for one year, and this will be the last year for our project. In terms of counterparty, it's Kambani uh, Research Center, we call Salmel, and also uh, Tropical Ecology uh, Research Institute, we that is uh, working together on this project together. And in the local regions, in terms of some of the samples of the February patients and wildlife has been collected, and from that we are going to extract the viruses and uh, what kind of uh, risk of infection disease are spreading is going to be analyzed. And from that, in terms of public health, what could be important? And the local uh, uh, testing uh, methodology has been established, could be easily implemented. And then afterwards, uh, in terms of the centralized diagnostic system uh, being established, so the full implementation in the field. So this is how we are conducting our research. And uh, there are several papers and uh, publications in the local, let's say, dengue virus, uh, and also hepatitis, and now it's a pan pandemic, COVID-19, and also in terms of uh, hepatitis, there's A, B, and C type, which also had been extracted, and also in Gabon, how they were introduced in the region, we are now conducting a detailed gene analysis in Africa, LCMD. Uh, uh, also have been extracted, and Alvo viruses, uh, West Nile viruses, and dengue. So those are some of the issues that we have evidently have found uh, in the region. So to these viruses, we are now trying to develop a diagnostic system. And for now, this uh, research in Subrep. Uh, well, so with the local diagnostic system, we have a lab methodology. Uh, we have been working already, uh, for instance, lab uh, with uh, the company. It's uh, from Deng, number one to number four, Chikungunya and SARS-CoV-2, uh, yellow fever. Uh, we have a, a lab, fluorescent lab methodology we have uh, developed. And this fluorescent lab with, from Cano Medical, the small size, uh, diagnostic device is going to be to us. In only 10 minutes or 20 minutes, you'll be able to diagnose the disease. It's very rapid. And uh, already at the time of Evora, in West uh, Africa, with the spread of that in uh, Republic of Congo, Evora spread an outbreak. In West Africa in 2015, total of 8,000 kids. The Japanese government is an urgent uh, donation to Guinea, uh, it has been extended, and also, again, we were there and uh, training uh, the local uh, researcher doing the uh, diagnostic, and also we had outdoor uh, research uh, or diagnostic facility. And uh, with SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 is now uh, very prevalent, and uh, in December, I was in Guinea, Republic of Guinea, and that is based on IOM. Uh, has uh, supported and funded uh, effort. So the system with Channel Medical already 
this uh, is uh, has been already approved as a uh, diagnostic kit, and in 2020 March, uh, it has been already utilized uh, for that purpose. So with this kit, we have brought uh, this uh, to uh, the partner countries, and we're already planning to do so. And from Kano Medical System, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Takahashi to take on from here, please. Takahashi, please. Hello, this is Takahashi speaking from Kano Medical. Well, we, a company system, uh, we have a generalizer system, as uh, Professor Yasuda introduced. It's utilizing fluorescent uh, lamp methodology. It's quick and it's light in weight and it's uh, driven by battery. So it is uh, very uh, effective to be utilized in developing countries. On the left, this is the actual test kit, Ebola, Zika, SARS, uh, new uh, uh, COVID-19, and uh, these are uh, being manufactured uh, in domestic. And PMD already we have received for Zika uh, te test kit. And outside of Japan, in terms of the Ebola or Zika, uh, the outbreak of that, the it's a, a product that could also be utilized uh, in uh, the domestic market. And on the right hand side, this is the actual device. So again, in Japan, as a medical device, we already have applied uh, for the uh, approval of that. So they're going on to the next slide. Uh, in the kit, the Ebola kit was shown, and this is uh, for the domestic market. As Professor Yasuda mentioned, uh, through Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, we have offered this in Guinea. In continuation of the business, we have now yet led to the commercial business in Kenya. So there are some open issues, as you can see in the bottom box. Well, number one, it's a business model. It's very difficult to establish. And for the development, there requires a high level of investment. It's a very intensive investment is needed. If we get receive approval, we do not have a fund to sustain this business. So how long? we be able to sell this item uh, is a question. So it, it could be a, just a one-time fad, and it could be quite an uh, unstable market. And after the pandemic, as a uh, urgent development, and when the pandemic uh, quenches, uh, we won't be able to get uh, the ROIs. And the other is the regulation. It's very difficult to understand the regulations. So as we mentioned, WHO approval. Getting the approval, even so, that alone, to sell in each country, we have heard that that is not an enough seal to sell in each country. After WHO seal or approval, we need to align with the, each of the African nations required regulation. And this is also cost intensive. So to, trying to do development work with all these uh, in mind is very difficult. So that will be all for Canada, from Canon Medical. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have been able to listen to four separate projects. There are three Asians, and the methods of being uh, uh, delivering this, and uh, these have been already used as emergency uh, applications. So, what could become an issue going forward, though, is how uh, these will or are being used in the field. Uh, we may come up with wonderful products, but if nobody uses that, then th everything will be wasted. And so I uh, would like to begin by referring to what the, uh, the, uh, the representative from Denka talked about as issues. I would like to know if a uh, Denka person or kind of medical people uh, think about how what are some of the things that they can do to overcome them? Uh, thoughts from the corporate side. Yes, uh, from uh, Denka representative. Thank you again. And as was mentioned by the Canon person, uh, getting approval is not the end. Uh, the most important, or it has to continue to delivery, and the bridging is needed. 
large corporations with past marketing uh, experience may not have a problem, but even if we come up with excellent product, uh, the part of uh, marketing, distributing in markets that need them will be the difficulty. So if uh, uh, national agencies uh, who have knowledge in that area, if they can assist us, it would be very helpful. It's major uh, barrier for us is to be able to overcome that go-to-market aspect. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, uh, yes, 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 please, uh, from Canon Medical. Same question. What your, your, are your thoughts? Uh, the issue I have raised, uh, I just ask questions. To be honest, I don't have, we don't have any solutions. The JICA's SDGs support program run today talks about the uh, business commercialization program uh, funding, and we have been funded for that for the in-lab uh, in a rapid uh, testing kit. And we are now in the process of surveying how we can best uh, commercialize what, uh, the product. But thank you very much. I know that all of uh, the scientists, uh, doctors, uh, staff members come, are doing everything possible uh, to come up with excellent uh, diagnostic tools. And uh, uh, almost everybody is worried that the funding will stop after four years or five years. And in order for any of these uh, technologies to take root, we need um, people like uh, WHO, but they are focusing only on SARS-CoV-2 and uh, Ebola. And people working in other fields will not be assisted. Uh, this is a major issue as to who should be the bridge, how. And this is not limited only to um, uh, diagnostic uh, tests. Uh, antimicrobials uh, are facing the same product. And of course, uh, the time is so limited, it probably cannot be uh, resolved in, the, in this. But JICA, AMED, any comments that you can provide on for these? We are now trying to prepare. We have received several questions from the audience. Maybe we can take that while we prepare uh, the screen. Immunochromatography and lamp that uh, Denka uh, has uh, developed. What is uh, uh, Denka's thought about uh, intellectual property rights? Do, they, do you own them? Uh, how long is the patent protection period? period. Uh, this is very detailed, but if you could respond to that, it would be helpful for all of the, the, the uh, potential partners. From Denka, please. Can, can, you, can you repeat the question, please? This is about patent protection. Um, how is that arranged for a lamp and immunochromatography? For the Ebola kit itself, uh, there's no patent uh, that we have to think about. We are using all of the public domain uh, technology. So there's no limitation for use of the kit by anybody. So there's no, no restrictions. But so LAMP and PCR, that's, you can use them freely. Uh, well, I specifically. I'm talking about our immunochromatography. For LAMP, uh, I'm sorry, I do not have la the knowledge. I have to ask somebody else to tell us about the uh, patent protection. May I? May I? Can Takahashi, Canon Medical. For LAMP method, there are several technologies that go into that. The primer, uh, uh, we have decided not to file together with Dr. Yasuda Nagasaki, so that's okay. And Aiken Kagaku, of course, has the other part on as, as necessary basis. Uh, this will be licensed out to us for commercialization purposes. Thank you. Uh, can you respond from JICA? 
if you are ready. Thank you. Uh, this is about the approval, uh, how to go beyond certification and approval area. I know people are having difficulty international certification and individual country certification uh, are two separate things. And uh, because of uh, COVID situation, the arrangement may, might change international or certification. WHO, at the time of emergency, will put together EUL and uh, the approach people used to take was to try and get approval there. You can go directly or we, of course, have people, staff members uh, seconded from uh, Japanese organizations working for WHO. You can go through them. We talk about all Japan approach and that can be taken to address the international organization. For separate the country, individual country regulations, um, African Medical Agency is being uh, considered, I understand, for harmonization, harmonization uh, among uh, the entire uh, continent. So that may be uh, an approach. Without going to the international, go to regional organization directly by approaching them, then uh, you can have uh, uh, products that can be marketed widely within the entire region of Africa, for example. It's not there yet, but uh, there are moves towards this, especially for smaller private companies, may be difficult to address country by country based uh, approval, etc. It would be wonderful if those kind of uh, larger regional organization can be established. Anything from AMED? If not, from Nigeria, there is a question. Japan Funding Agency and African Funding Agency and the co collaboration, how is being achieved? So is there any comment on this question, please? Yes, thank you. Scheme-wise, the overseas funding agency to cooperate with them. And there's no such scheme, unfortunately, but uh, one by one, respectively, case by case. If you can make inquiries, we can think about how we be able to achieve uh, in a co-joint effort. The researchers, it could be through a researcher, it could be direct. Uh, please uh, acquire AMED directly. We'll think of a scheme. Thank you very much. One other question is, each of the professors, how are you trying to work with corporations, private uh, sector? So the matching, of course, opportunity with the private sector, how were you able to achieve that? There is an interest in terms of the collaboration with the entities, like uh, in uh, Professor Nakada working with Denka Corporation, with Kato-san. And uh, what is the trigger to working with uh, Mr. Kato from uh, Denka? Well, the trigger, well, I must say, before Satrap, at the time of influenza, influenza kit, Kentenka, uh, had created with various types of uh, diagnostic system and GT project, there are a lot of antibodies that was going to be created for the influenza diagnostic scheme. And at that time, I have gotten to know Denka as a company. And that was the basis. And with the outbreak of Ebola, uh, we, they said, Ebola, uh, we have antibody, shall we work together? And uh, I inquired Denka, and they said yes. So in various joint researches, uh, well, it was before the satraps, you already have an established relationship, in other words. So, Professor Yasuda, your relationship with Canon Medical, is it the same? Yes, already 15 years we've been working together with Canon. And Canon has approached us first, and since then, in various infectious diseases, we are conducting joint uh, efforts. Thank you very much. So, the time has come, unfortunately. So, I wanted to ask uh, more questions. 
and I'm sure there were many questions from the audience as well. But unfortunately, we will need to conclude the session. So each of the professors have extended uh, various effort in achieving a uh, result with the partner countries. I think it was very clear the uh, effort that has been placed. So I think the question is how can we continue that effort and to the partner countries, how would they be able to put that into practical use? So would we be able to come up with a scheme to enable that? So it's ending in five years term and that's not the end of the story. So as uh, JICA and AMED, we asked uh, them uh, please to consult us. But uh, please uh, feel free to ask us and make inquiries. Whether or not that's uh, something that's feasible or not, we hope that we will be able to make that feasible. But with that, we would like to conclude this part of the panel discussion. Thank you very much.